<laughs> Thanks, that was concrete, mate, there you go. Okay, so uh, I used a, uh, a shrinker, this old girl, in uh, one of my videos recently, a number of you had mentioned it, um, and, and what? <coughs> Fucking trains. <laughs> Go on. Alright, so at the minute we've got the shrinker jaws in here, and uh, you know, this, this particular body comes with a set of stretches as well, yeah? So uh, all, all I wanted to do was quickly demystify things a little bit, uh, persuade you lot that this tool is an alternative to skill and doesn't really require much skill itself to use, uh, but also show you um, if you buy a cheap one like this, uh, you'll probably have to do a bit of fettling to get it working. Yeah, so um, uh, we'll. Uh, I've I've not actually modified my stretcher jaws yet. Um, you know, I haven't had any reason to do any stretching, but the shrinker jaws are, you know, I think I think there's more than likely use, but we'll uh, do a little test piece using both jaws and what? Yeah, look, before these things came along, um, making making those curved angles, like three-dimensional um, curves, I suppose, three-dimensional bends um, would be the reserve of, of someone with a, a lot of hard-learned skill and a hammer and some dollies or whatever in it um, but really the, the shrinker stretcher will, will get you almost as good of results even if it's got a bit of marking on the metal with yeah, absolutely no skill whatsoever yeah and um, and what uh, not as versatile obviously because you can't start in the middle of a bit of metal you need to be working from the edge so it doesn't doesn't get you everywhere you need to go but it gets you pretty close doesn't it hey so um so what I'll show you the problems with these jaws we'll fix the stretcher and then uh and then I have a little go on a bit of metal okay so these are the, the two sets of jaws they're removable with these uh little knurled knobs on on this particular machine um Sometimes you get them and they're a little bit harder to take off if you've just got a dedicated shrinker or a stretcher. Um, but basically what we've got in here is a, a, set of, a set of anvils and these are, these are serrated to grip the metal which is why you, know, you can instantly tell if someone's been using a, a shrinker or a stretcher because it's got those, these little draw marks um, all over the the stretch bit of metal and, uh, and this block up here with these with these angles um, it's important to keep these clean with a bit of light oil on them um, and these these anvils are separated by a spring yeah so they're always trying to push out and then when this block comes down on those angled anvils it squeezes them together, doesn't it? Yeah, so it's pushing down, then squeezing together and shrinking the metal. Um, and obviously, it's got one top and bottom. And the bottom one's working exactly the same way. We've got a little bail arm here that uh, attaches to the to the body of the the tool, which uh, pulls the pulls the anvils back up. Yeah, so pretty pretty simple. Um, these ones have cleaned up. Shiny surface there and you know the reason none of this was working when I got it was because this is a obviously quite a cheap one and uh, you got these tool marks the cutter marks on the on the block and anvils yeah so can you hear that can you guess what it is yet <laughs> Sorry, Ralph. Um, yeah, so uh, all I did on the on the shrinker jaws was polish these surfaces up, and it worked perfectly. Oh no, it wasn't quite all I did. We had to do a bit of fettling with this with this wire. Yeah, um, but we'll get to that. Maybe we won't need it here. The long and short of it was on the on the shrinkers, the the wire was actually keeping these pressed in together. So I had to just put a, a slightly more acute right angle on them and trim them down a tiny bit. Yeah, but it, you know, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. 
I, all I'm doing is, is showing you here that uh, yeah, this one's even rougher. That if you buy a cheap one, you'll most likely have to um, put a little bit of spit and polish into it. But uh, you know, on the whole, um, it's an entirely serviceable machine. Once you've done that, it's never going to fall apart. It's incredibly heavy. Um, so there are smaller ones you can get. I, I wouldn't. I mean, this this only gives you sort of an inch an inch throat and if you want to go if you want to make a flange that's bigger than that you'll end up doing a lot of hammering like I did in the um, when I was making that shroud uh, and the smaller one's only going to let you make like sort of half inch um, half inch flange on your on the edges of your curves so uh, yeah big as you can really is, is my advice and this you've got particular requirements um, yeah let's uh, let's polish these up uh, all I did was using my using a little pad in, in the die grinder. I think I even used it in the drill. Actually, you don't need don't need a huge amount of material taken off. You just want to get the surfaces smooth. Okay, that's pretty much it. My uh, should work now. I went over it with a with coarse pad. No idea what weight that is. Probably uh, sub 100 anyway. And then uh, cleaned it up with um, I don't know, I don't know what that is, 120 or something. Uh, I do have these little tell you what. I have their little little Scotch pads as well. I'm just gonna give it a little once over with this. This is a nice thing to do, isn't it? Just to give it a little bit of a buff. Okay, so that's all the uh, the blocks and the anvils cleaned up. They're not perfect. They don't have to be, but they'll uh, they'll definitely. Uh, It'll definitely work a bit better now. Let's see if it works with this arm without modifying that. Modifying that. Uh, it does want to be pretty clean when you're putting these together. Right? You think any any bit of dust in there is gonna gonna bind it up, and they'll uh, they'll never stay clean, will they? Because uh, <laughs> I don't know. Whenever I've got these out, I've got grinder dust all over the bench because it probably means I've been cutting metal. But uh, what? Uh, I wouldn't take them apart to clean them. I'd just absolutely drown them in uh, in oil if they're binding up a bit. It should wash any shit out, and also keep these anvils lubricated a little bit, I suppose. Lubricated. Top one has holes for the arm, bottom one doesn't. See if it works on a bit of metal. Okay, so this is still the um, the stretcher. Um, what we have to look for here is before the before the jaws meet, they want to be touching uh, together. Um, when we press down, they want to open up. Yeah, um, and they're doing it nice and evenly on here. 
on the on the shrinker it's obviously the opposite way round. They want to be apart when you're when you're not clamped and then as you pull it down the shrinker should pull them together. And that was one of the problems I had off um with the uh with the sh shrinker jaws the, the the arm was um not quite the right shape so it's keeping them keeping them uh half pressed in even with the handle up, so with no pressure on them at all, they were sort of halfway to where they wanted to be. Okay, so still got the stretcher and the, the freshly modified stretcher jaws, and we'll just uh, we'll put a bit of a fold in this metal just to demonstrate the stretcher jaws working. ways to make your, your patch or whatever you're making, you know, you either start off with your, with your fold already in the metal and or you use the shrinker to put the fold in the metal, yeah, it's easy to do it this way. I need to I need to make a, a mount for this. Really, really simple, absolutely no skill involved whatsoever. Just a little bit of a little bit of thought beforehand to make sure you're putting your stretches and shrinks in the right place, yeah? A nice, nice quadrant there. We can use for any number of purposes. Right? The other way to do things, uh, which is how I made the Fran, the Fran, Fran shrouds. Fran has got a massive shroud, isn't she? The fan shroud for the uh, for the list R. Um, but what I did, what I did with that was uh, what I did with that. Was to obviously figure out figure out my my shape. Um, we'll, we'll do something similar here. Yeah. Then uh, just just put a crease in those lines with the hammer, and then keeping this flat, obviously uh, took the edges over. Yeah. And if you remember, I was using a a block of wood for a bit of help in that because um, my my flat wasn't very big, uh, but the flange was bigger than the jaws of the uh, shrinker. So what we'll do here is exactly the same, but this time we'll have this flange pointing up and this flange pointing down um, doesn't make any difference but uh, the flange on the inside of the radius will need stretching and the flange on the outside will need shrinking yeah so I'll, I'll try and demonstrate that for you. Might have to get my other gilbos because these ones don't don't like going around corners. They're great for uh, going the distance, but only in a straight line. Here we go, Mr. Round the Houses.
Okay. Get rid of this. So uh, this doesn't really matter too much. So, um, all right, we're not we're not going for a maximum uh, maximum accuracy here. This is just a, a demonstrator, but we just want to put a little crease all the way along here and another crease all the way along there on the other side. So. Uh, We need to keep it as, as crisp as possible, but we can go back and crisp it up <laughs> later. Later, if we want the oh bollocks, of course I can't. Can't really. Uh, I can't see through metal yet. Working on it though. Hey, eh? if you eat enough carrots, if you eat enough carrots. Yeah, I mean, like with, with the stretching side, metal generally wants to stretch when you hit it with a hammer anyway, so. Um, and you can even, see where's our little, where's our little bendy bit? I don't know. You can even stretch out if you get a simple, where's that gone? Oh, yeah, I've got a clean bench as well. <laughs> Look. You can even you can make something like this just by hammering the absolute crap out of this this edge anyway, isn't it? Like it wouldn't be very neat and tidy, but you know even that's not amazingly neat and tidy because it's got the teeth mark there. But you know whatever. Stretching stretching isn't the big deal. It's the shrinking that, um, that is the big end. Either way, we've got our we've got our little creases put along the we've got a crease there and a, a little crease here, haven't we? So this side, the inside radius, we have to stretch because you know this is this edge here is smaller than the edge that we're actually going to follow this the whole piece of metal is going to be stretched to contour around that radius uh, whereas this is the opposite on the outside radius we have to shrink don't we yep. we've not gone we've not gone miles and miles with our little with our little crease line that's just a just to suggest it yeah <laughs> just a little suggestion as to where it wants to behave We got in here, stretch off, stretch off. Yeah, look, we're going too far, and so funny things are happening now. So we have to. <laughs> it looks a mess. But we're working on tight radiuses and I'm getting greedy. But uh, what? Just smart that up a little bit between a. Good job I didn't just spend ages polishing that, isn't it? George, we've got Mr. Stretcher in now. We'll stretch this outside. No, Mr. Shrinker, here we need to shrink the outside.
Right, it is early stages when you'll get the most most distortion in that. After a while it admits defeat and does what you tell it to. But right now we haven't got a very crisp edge. So we'll have to just go back and tidy that up with the uh, hammer. And not get greedy, which is what I'm doing now. Yeah? Don't get greedy. Starting to go. Yeah? Starting to go. I need to clean this vice tonight. All manner of shit and corruption there. Yeah, this is this is this is the thing. You've never got enough weird shaped bits of metal to do this job. Even if you had enough, you still wouldn't have enough. I reckon. It's one of them, one of them things, isn't it? Do you guys mind if I give up on the idea of it being nice and crisp? Yeah, that's, that's awfully decent of you, eh? Cheers, lads. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Look. Ah, oh, it's just a demonstrator, eh? Just a demonstrator. Demonstrator. <laughs> Stretcher, back on the stretcher, stretcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doing the internals is a. Uh, not as easy. Not, not as much space. So we are, you know, she's making quite a mess. The lovely thing about that, um, steel, though, isn't it? Eh? You can make a mess and then pretty much just dress it out again, can't you? Camera just died. I'm not sure. Like all the all the controls have got a bit messed up on this camera now. So <laughs> I, all all of that might have been for nothing because I'm not sure if she if she saw me getting to this point. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to start again, I suppose. Oh look at that! <laughs> I've got uh, an entirely corrupted camera here. Uh, hopefully I, I showed you enough that you've got an idea of uh, you know how how easy it is to make basic shapes with that. Drink a stretcher. Um, I'll show you again, but we've moved on now. The benches are full of dump truck toys, and uh, we've got some uh, what um, concrete molds being made on the floor space. So uh, it's not really practical at the minute. I think I think we got there. Though. I did dig the, uh, the the bits out of the out of the scrap metal bin. Um, I made a second one, <laughs> but again the the camera camera messed that, I, don't, I can't remember now whether that was first or first or second, uh, another one, they're not, they're not excellent and flat, yeah, that's why if you remember with the uh, Lister fan shroud that I made, I made a wooden, wooden block to use 
as a template and as a as a sort of buck as a as a dolly to work the the metal around so um you're not really meant to use the, sh the shrinker this way i mean you can i don't think there's any rules to say you can't but uh it's not what it's designed for but it, you know if you if you can take your time and have a bit more patience than, uh, than I did making this test piece or you know knock up a, uh, a lump of wood if it's critical then uh, you'll, you'll get you'll get a lot tidier results yeah so uh, nothing uh, nothing nothing mystical about the shrinker is it <laughs> there's no no uh, tremendous amounts of skill required to use it so uh, well, I, I, you know, I can, can only recommend if you've got an interest in one, you you, uh, you borrow one or get hold of a cheap one and um, have a little bit of fun with it. I always have fun with mine. I just uh, don't don't have the opportunity to use it as much as I'd like. But yeah, there you go. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll find more opportunities shortly. All right, take it easy, folks. See you later. Bye bye.